the topic I am going to place before you is man's place in the animal kingdom and basic features of human society. Now let us see man's place in the animal kingdom. Organisms are classified on the basis of evolutionary relationships. The extent of the relationship is determined mainly by the structural similarities based on common descent called homologies. For example, the bones of the forelimb of lizard, bird and human are so similar in arrangement and number that they are said to be homologous and they ultimately derive their forelimb from a common ancestor. Structures that are functionally similar but without genetic affinity and not derived from a common ancestor are analogous. The wings of butterfly and the wing of bird are analogous. They perform similar function but are without genetic affinity. Prosimians like lemurs, lorises and tarsiers, then monkeys, apes and men are classified as primates because when the nervous system especially brain, teeth, limb, digits and other physical traits of these animals are examined, it becomes clear that they share common ancestor. Similarly, homologies of lions, tigers, leopards and the domestic cat bring them together into one group that evolved from a common ancestor. The system of classification based on homologies is attributed to the Swedish botanist and naturalist Carolus Linnaeus. Although there were classificatory schemes before him, his scheme withstood the taste of time. He instituted the binomial system of naming organisms using two terms, one generic name and another species name. Thus, he named domesticate as Felis domesticus, the lion as Panthera leo, and man as Homo sapiens. Animal kingdom is divided into two sub-kingdoms. Protozoa, that is single cell or unicellular organisms, and Metazoa, that is multicellular organisms. Metazoa is divisible into a number of phyla such as Porifera represented by sponges, Sulentreta, corals and jellyfish etc. Platyhelminthes represented by plate worms, Nematia, ribbon worm, Bryozoa most like animals, Mollusca such as Easter, squids and octopus etc. Annelida segmented animals, Arthropoda which is again divisible into subphyla like crustaceans such as lobster, crabs, insects such as ants, fly, bees etc. and arachnida represented by spiders and scorpions, then chordata etc. The phylum chordata is divided into two subphyla, invertebrate chordate and vertebrata. Vertebrates, the most numerous of the chordates, are different in certain ways from all other metazoa. Their primary structural feature, a vertebral column, distinguishes them from invertebrates and has given them their name. The subphylum vertebrate is divided into five classes such as pieces that is fist, amphibia represented by salamanders and frogs, reptilia like dinosaurs, snakes, lizards, crocodiles etc. and apes that is birds and mammalia animals that nourish or suckle the young ones with mammary secretion. The presence of mammary glands in male place men into this subphylum mammalia. The class mammalia is divided into three subclasses. Number one, 
prototheria animals that lay egg and circles such as monotremes platypus and spiny and eater number 2 metatheria that is presence of marsupial paws such as kangaroo and opossum and number 3 eutheria it includes all the placental animals including men eutheria subclass is again classified into eight orders they are carnivora such as bears dogs cats etc number 2 ferrisodactyla represented by horses and rhinos number 3 artiodactyla represented by cows pigs hippos camels deer etc number 4 proboscida such as elephants number 5 rodentia represented by rats rabbits squirrels beavers etc number 6 chiroptera that is represented by bats number 7 insectivora such as tree shrews moles etc then number 8 primate prosimians monkeys apes and mankind belong to primate one of the best descriptions of primate is given by myward in 1873 it goes primates are unguiculate having nails clavicular presence of collar bone placental mammals with orbits and circled by bone three kinds of teeth such as incisor canine and molar at least at one time of life brain always with a posterior lobe and calcarine fissure the innermost digits of at least one pair of extremities opposable hallux with a flat nail or none a well developed cecum penis pendulous testis scrotal always two pectoral mammae the order primate is divided into two sub orders they are prosimia and anthropoidea the sub order prosimia this order includes such animals as lemurs tarsiers and lorises which are thought to be precursors of the simians that is monkeys it is divided into three super families they are lemuroidea lorisoidea and tarsioidea suborder anthropoidea all apes monkeys and human beings belong to this suborder it is again divided into three super families number 1 Shiboidea also known as platyrhine or new world monkeys number 2 cercopithecoidea also known as catarhine old world monkeys and number 3 hominoidea the super family hominoidea consists of three families they are hylobatidae represented by gibbons number 2 pongidae which consists of three genera Pongo, that is orang utan, pan, that is chimpanzee, and gorilla. And number three, hominidae. This superfamily is represented by the genus Homo, which includes the present human, Homo sapiens. Man possesses the required primate characteristics in his body, and what is more important is that he has developed a number of specific characters. which have given him a unique position in the whole of the animal kingdom the skeleton of man has been designed superbly to work perfectly upright the eyes of man have been provided with specific quality of having sharp and three dimensional vision the hands of man are characterized by two different powerful grips for holding the objects to fit various situations Man surpasses all other animals by his specific ability to make and use of tools, his uninterrupted speaking power, his capacity to modify environment to fit his life and formation of complex social life. Culture in human society helps in the transmission of accumulated knowledge 
to succeeding generations, which is completely absent in subhuman groups. Let us now discuss the basic features of human society. Society may be defined as a collection of individuals which are bound together by sets of norms. These norms are nothing but the collective behavior, do's and don'ts of the member which in turn constitutes the identity of the group. Behavior includes everything an organism does. Behavior may be taken as phenotypic manifestation of genetic endowment, although the precise genetic mechanism is poorly known. It is also greatly influenced by environment. If a behavior is manifestation of exclusively genetic endowment, it is instinctive behavior. For example, behavior of a rabbit is different from a mouse or a dog or a lion. Behavior of different species of birds are different, and a society determined by such instinctive behaviors is instinctive society, which is otherwise also definable as sociality. Instinctive society or sociality is the characteristics of non-human animals, which is relatively simple and not modifiable. Human society on the other hand, is mostly determined by non-instinctive behaviors rather than instinctive determinant. Non-instinctive behaviors are learned after birth and modifiable. Strictly speaking, genetic endowment of human is the development of advanced brain and its consequence is creativity or ability to produce culture. Along with the development of brain during the course of evolution, Creative components have gradually overtaken instinctive determinants of the activities of organism, resulting into development of culture. Culture is the way of life or behavioral pattern of human only. It includes material or tangible things such as tools, houses, dress, ornaments, arts, etc., as well as intangible or non-material attributes such as language, customs, beliefs, religions, values, morals, rituals, and ceremonies, etc. Culture is acquired through learning as a member of a society, not through the genes. Culture is therefore social heredity, not genetic. There is no human society without culture. We have seen insects like honeybees, termites, ends, etc. have systematically organized social system. Division of labor occurs in ant and bee societies. Ants are mostly polymorphic, with small individuals working in the nest and medium or bigger ones working outside. Huge big-headed individuals become protective soldiers. They even use their heads to block the entrance to all outsiders besides members of the colony. Honeybees have division of labor by age. The youngest bees feeding larvae, older ones building the comb, and still older ones flying out for nectar and pollen and bee glue. Many of the polymorphic differences are apparently determined by food. The new queens get royal jelly regularly the small workers get royal jelly for only a few days. Other differences are genetic, as the males are developed from unfertilized eggs. Division of labor according to age and sex is observed in higher animals too. There is a period in almost all the animals when the young ones are dependents of the parents, and therefore a form of family exists at least for some time. Incubation among the birds is done mostly by the females. In some birds, incubation is done in turn by the couple bot, while in some other, it is done even by the males. In many cases, the males bring food to incubating females. 
after hatching the mother takes special care till the chicks are grown up and able to live their own the wild buffaloes encircle their calves like a fort at the time of danger or rest to protect the young ones from impending danger territorial domination is observed among carnivores and primates organized hunting is seen among the lions warning cry of birds and animal to save the group from the predators etc are undeniable characteristics of society but such kinds of relationships cannot just qualify for the status of society as that of humans because animal societies lack the indispensable attribute that is culture in human society relationships are established through social institutions such as marriage family lineage clan etc and such relationships which begin at birth continue to exist even up to date the members of a society are bound together by common language customs beliefs rituals religion etc which are learned as a member of a society if a chinese baby is brought up in england he will speak english and behave exactly like an englishman does except for the appearance same will happen if a negro baby is brought up in china this justifies that culture is not genetic but learned a cuckoo hatched by a crow mother never behaves like a crow elsa the famous lioness brought up by joy adamson and jess adamson adopted her bestial nature when she had cubs she neither brought her children closer to her masters nor taught the cubs what she had learned from humans and this is what we call instinctive behavior of animals the houses of termites are castles with single construction to set drains and porous outer layers to control carbon dioxide and humidity are so sophisticatedly constructed that the most dexterous human hands cannot match it the nest of living birds is so delicately woven with reeds and twigs that the most skillful human hand will find it difficult to imitate it it is the male or prospecting husband to whip it and the females examine the quality if it is not satisfactory the female will tear the nest and the male has to build it again we have seen chimpanzees using stick to fish out termites from the moons use stones to crack nuts and throw stones to ward off intruders such activities of animals however never develop further throughout the ages castles of termites remain the same no weaving bird after seeing the houses of human ever attempts to modify the original design by putting a window of leaf chimpanzee has never been seen developing the idea of sharpening a stick to make it more effective these are indicatives that the brain of non-human animals lacks the faculty of creativity that humans have culture is the product of creativity so let us now summarize the basic features of human society human society is based on learned behavior the product of his creativity and therefore non instinctive whereas sociality or society of non human creatures is instinctive dictated by genetics of course genetics of human brain is endowed with creativity which is lacking in the animal brain human society is dynamic as it changes or develops from time to time whereas animal societies are static rigid and not modifiable culture is the attribute of human society whereas animal societies are without culture human society is complex being consisted of well defined social institutions such as marriages family clan and lineages 
political organizations, economic organizations, hierarchical system and roles of the members of the society, etc. Sociality or animal society is devoid of such institutions. That's all.